Archbishop, my question for you is uh, drawing on the fact that you've uh, been long involved in the struggle for orthodoxy in the Anglican Communion and in GAFCON since its inception, uh, and in particular that you were involved in launching GAFCON Ireland very recently. Could you share with us something of what you shared with them? Let's have a clap for Ireland, please. <laughs> and when I said we were clapping for Ireland, I wasn't talking about football. Well, as my brother Stanley just said, it's a great privilege to be with you. And it's an enormous joy to know that God is with us. God is with us, brothers and sisters. And there's no better place to be. There's no better place to be. When we launched GAFCON, Ireland recently, a number of people asked me the obvious question, so, so what is GAFCOM? Because let's face it, it's, it's a very strange word, isn't it? GAFCOM. <laughs> I could speak at length about that, but I'm not going to. But one of the things we say regularly and clearly, it is not an alternative Anglican communion because we are the true Anglican church. Because the true Anglican church is made up of born again Christians who like Anglicanism. And one thing I have had to say, being, as it were, a grandfather of this whole thing, or one of the grandfathers, is that others have left. Now, that's sad. We've heard a lot in recent times of what has been called a loving disagreement. Now, I know all about loving disagreements. I've been married nearly 50 years. <laughs> But having a loving disagreement does not mean having to live with somebody who disagrees with me on the fundamental things of life. If you were to, if I were to say to you, I have decided that I respect other people's opinions and therefore I am now 99% faithful to Sylvia, what would you say? I'll repeat that again. If I were to say, respecting what other people think, I am now 99% faithful to Sylvia. Would you agree? No, because we are called to be 100% faithful. Thank you. There's some happily married men out there I can hear. You cannot mix pure water with poison. It doesn't matter whether it's a liter of poison or a drop of poison. I'm not going to drink it. And therefore, it's terribly important to realize that we, as a movement, took a decision all those years ago that we were going to stand firm because that's what we're called to do, to stand firm. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Having done all, to stand firm. And we stand together, which is what we're doing here. We stand together, because the world has to see us standing together. Now, one of the sad things about the fact that this false gospel has arisen, and those of you who've read it recently will know exactly what Galatians chapter 1 says. There is such a thing as a different and false gospel, and you have to recognize it. 
but when a false gospel comes to light, you cannot keep quiet. You cannot say nothing. So it's not just that we stand together firmly, but that we speak out. And that is another thing that Gafcon does. It speaks out so that people can hear the truth of what the Word of God says. Now, one of the very sad things about this false gospel that's come out is that it thinks it's modern. This is the foolishness of human beings. We think that being modern makes us right. And this new heresy is not new. This heresy which says it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you believe it sincerely and you've got to learn to accept that does not recognize that at the heart of Christianity there is something which is far more important than what I think. And that is what God thinks. You see, if it's just about my perception, then we will have hundreds of thousands of different versions of Christianity. But it is not about what I think, it's about what God has said. The writer to the Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 1 says, Therefore we must pay more attention to what we have heard. And the gospel is not rationalism. There's nothing wrong with rationality. It helps. But rationalism is when it all comes down to what I think. When you wear these funny clothes on an airplane, people have a strange reaction. I've even heard of somebody asking for a downgrade when they realized they had to sit next to me once. <laughs> because they can't get away. They can't go and sit in the toilet for eight hours. And I decided years ago, if I had somebody sitting next to me on an airplane, I would tell them about Jesus. <laughs> and this particular gentleman, seeing the clerical garbs looked at me and said, well, I suppose you'll want to know what I think of God. And I smiled and said, thank you, Lord, I've got the answer to that one. And as I was able to say, well, how about me telling you what God thinks about you? You see, it isn't what I think of God, it's what God has revealed. And this, what we could call, if you like, relativism or pluralism, it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you believe it sincerely, is as old as time. It means disagreeing with God. If you go to Acts chapter 17, you'll find that the Apostle Paul in Athens found what we find today, pluralism, and he preached Jesus. He preached Jesus. There's nothing new in thinking that I'm right. But what brings us to repentance is hearing what God says and measuring my life against what God has said. And that's what leads, as Richard was telling us this morning, to repentance. Because when I see what God thinks, I know I'm wrong. And I need God's forgiveness. And yet, this is something we face around the world. It doesn't matter what you believe, as long as you believe something. Have you heard that? Yeah. I was sitting on an airplane flying into Argentina once, and the lady sitting next to me had made her confession so quickly, she wanted to take advantage of me being there so as not to have to go to see her priest the next day. She'd made her confession so quickly that I hadn't time to explain that I was an Anglican and not a Roman Catholic. <laughs> and as far as I know, there, so far there is no liturgy to put that right. But when 
she realized what had happened, she smiled and she said, oh well, I suppose it doesn't really matter what you believe as long as you believe something. And I looked at my watch and I knew I had 20 minutes before we landed in Buenos Aires. So I smiled because it's always nice for people to feel comfortable when you're about to destroy their basic philosophy. <laughs> and I said, you look like a very intelligent woman. You need to help people a little bit, you know. I said, but when somebody offers to do your shopping, do you happen to say, and they ask you, what would you like me to buy? Do you happen to say it doesn't matter what you buy as long as you buy me something? <laughs> or when you're planning a journey and the tra tra travel agent says, where do you want to go? Do you by any chance say it doesn't matter where I go as long as I go somewhere? <laughs> or when somebody in your family is not well and you go to the drugstore, the pharmacy or the, or the chemist and they say, what medicine can I give you? Do you say it doesn't matter what you give me as long as you give me something? <laughs> You're getting the message. <laughs> I said, isn't it rather dangerous to trust your eternal destiny on something as foolish as that? And she smiled and said, I wish the journey was just beginning. <laughs> so let's be firm. And let us stand firmly and let us be loving as we share the truth with those who are still blinded by the God of this world. Because we must pray for them and love them. Now we're going to go off on the trips in a moment. In a moment, there'll be a final moment. I'm watching the clock here, which I know my brother Michael was watching as well. Let me say a prayer, and then we'll go on with this last moment of this morning's, now this afternoon's activities. That means you can begin to move choir. Yes, you pick the message up. Yes. The Lord be with you. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you have spoken so clearly in your word. And we thank you that there is a true gospel and that your true church has been challenged and born again through the true gospel. And we pray that knowing the truth, we might stand firm, stand firm together, contend for the faith, and proclaim the wonderful gospel of Jesus to this world that so needs to hear good news. In the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you.